The casting for the 1979 movie Moonraker was a careful process. For the lead role of James Bond, Roger Moore was already established from previous films. Lois Chiles was selected to play Holly Goodhead after her screen test showed she had great interaction with Moore. Richard Keel was brought back as Jaws due to his popularity and his ability to portray a gentle giant with a menacing side was unmatched. Michael Lonsdale, who played the villain Hugo Drax, was chosen for his ability to convey cold intelligence and a sense of threat. The casting team looked for actors who could bring excitement and believability to their roles. They held auditions and chemistry tests to ensure the actors fit well together. The final cast was a group of talented actors who could bring the thrilling story of Moonraker to life. In the 1979 movie Moonraker, director Lewis Gilbert aimed to create an exciting space adventure that was larger than life. He was inspired by the success of science fiction films at the time and wanted to blend the spy genre with futuristic elements. His style was to use grand sets and special effects to make the story believable. He worked closely with the production team to design the space shuttles and stations. The cast, including Roger Moore as James Bond, trained for zero gravity scenes to make them look real. The collaboration between the director, cast, and crew was key to bringing the thrilling story of Moonraker to the screen. Moonraker, released in 1979, is a James Bond adventure that takes him to the stars. In this movie, Bond, played by Roger Moore, faces off against the villainous Hugo Drax, who plans to destroy all human life by launching a space station. Along the way, Bond teams up with the brave and skilled Holly Goodhead, and together they fight to save the world. This film stands out for its space setting and thrilling action scenes. As we dive into the world of Moonraker, we'll uncover many surprising funny and even sad facts about the film. So stay tuned for an exciting journey through this unique Bond movie. Now, I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. Do you have a special memory linked to Moonraker? Was there an actor in this film that stood out to you? Roger Moore's charm, perhaps? Share your favorite moments and the actors you loved in the comments. We're eager to read about your experiences and the memories you hold dear from Moonraker. Your stories are important to us and we can't wait to hear them. So, let's get started and share those tales that make Moonraker memorable for you. The movie Moonraker's production was a big task. The team built large and detailed sets to create the look of space and space stations. They filmed in many places, including France, Italy, Brazil, the United States, and in studios in the United Kingdom. They faced challenges like moving equipment and people to different countries and dealing with changes in weather. For filming in zero gravity, they used wires and camera tricks to make actors look like they were floating. They also used models and special effects to show space and the space shuttles. This was before computer effects, so they had to create everything by hand or with machines. It took a lot of work and creativity to make it all look real on the big screen. Moonraker, often seen as an underrated entry in the Bond series, stands out for its adventurous spirit. The decision to follow the spy who loved me with Moonraker was a strategic one, offering audiences a familiar thrill with the return of the character Jaws. Despite some viewers dismissing the film as excessive, it's important to remember that the most memorable Bond films like Goldfinger have embraced this larger-than-life approach. While the special effects may not have aged well, they don't detract from the film's charm. The space battle scenes, though not cutting edge by today's standards, carry the essence of classic Bond action. The villain Drax, although not the most iconic adversary Bond has faced, presents a credible threat with his inventive and sinister schemes. The controversy surrounding Jaws' transformation from villain to ally is notable, but it reflects a deeper narrative about the influence of personal relationships on our choices. The film's global journey, from the canals of Venice to the vibrant streets of Rio, adds to its appeal, providing a picturesque backdrop for Bond's investigation into Drax's plans. The casting of Lois Chiles as a CIA agent strikes the right balance between professionalism and allure fitting the Bond formula perfectly. The unfortunate fate of Corrine Cleary's character at the hands of Drax adds a dark twist to the story. John Barry's score brings a nostalgic touch to the film, and while the Moonraker theme may not have achieved the same commercial success as previous Bond songs, it remains a significant part of the franchise's musical legacy. Shirley Bassey's performance is noteworthy, adding depth to the film's auditory experience. Overall, Moonraker offers a blend of suspense, exotic locations, and memorable characters, all wrapped up in the unmistakable style of a Bond film. 
It's a movie that invites viewers to enjoy the escapades of the Seven, even if they're not familiar with the entire series. The music for the film Moonraker was created to match the story's space adventure theme. Composer John Barry, who worked on many James Bond films, made the music. He used different instruments to give a sense of excitement and danger. The title song was sung by Shirley Bassey, who also sang for other James Bond movies. Her powerful voice helped set the tone for the movie. The music played a big part in making the audience feel the suspense and action of the story. The musicians recorded the music with care to make sure it fit well with the scenes. This helped the movie become a memorable experience for viewers. Bernard Lee and Desmond Lolan shared the screen in 10 films, showcasing a strong collaboration over the years. Their joint filmography includes titles like From Russia with Love and Goldfinger in the early 1960s, leading up to The Spy Who Loved Me in the late 1970s. The film in question was their last shared venture. While scouting for locations, the filmmakers considered Nepal and India, with the latter being featured in a later film. Ian Fleming's character Drax was initially envisioned as a certain type of Englishman, which influenced casting decisions years later. Despite considering other actors, Michael Lonsdale was ultimately chosen to bring Drax to life, while Louis Jordan was cast in a different role in a subsequent film. The 1979 movie Moonraker, directed by Lewis Gilbert, features memorable scenes that stand out for their creative vision and execution. One such scene is the opening skydiving sequence where James Bond, played by Roger Moore, is pushed out of a plane without a parachute. The scene is thrilling as Bond dives through the air to catch the villain and take his parachute. This was achieved through skilled stunt work and innovative camera techniques, creating a sense of real danger and excitement. Another notable scene is the space shuttle battle. The use of models and early computer effects made the shuttles and space station look realistic for the time. The actors, including Lois Chiles as Dr. Holly Goodhead, performed in zero gravity-like conditions, adding to the authenticity of the performance. The filmmakers and actors have shared that these scenes were challenging to shoot but rewarding. They aimed to push the boundaries of what was possible in film, and their efforts paid off by leaving a lasting impression on the audience. The direction, performance, and cinematography all worked together to make these scenes memorable parts of the film. The audience has taken on an adventure that is both visually stunning and emotionally engaging, showcasing the power of cinema to transport viewers to new and exciting worlds. Frank Sinatra was not only considered to sing the main theme, but was also offered a significant acting role as Hugo Drax. The story, inspired by Ian Fleming's writing, begins and ends with powerful imagery. The opening line describes simultaneous gunfire, while the closing line conveys a poignant farewell. Interestingly, a set designed for the film Shuttle was repurposed. Originally a meeting room, it was transformed into a blast chamber for a different scene. This creative use of sets showcases the behind-the-scenes ingenuity in filmmaking. The 1979 movie Moonraker had a significant effect on audiences and popular culture. It showed advanced technology and space travel at a time when these were hot topics. The film's portrayal of space and gadgets captured the imagination of many and reflected the era's interest in space exploration. It also brought up themes of global threat and cooperation, which were relevant during the Cold War period. The character of James Bond, with his charm and wit, became a model of a smooth, sophisticated hero. The movie's success led to more films and books featuring similar stories of adventure and technology. It also influenced fashion, with the styles worn by the characters becoming popular. Moonraker's mix of humor, action, and futuristic gadgets made it a film that people remembered and talked about, showing how movies can reflect and shape the times they are made in. In adapting the story for the screen, the original plot of the book was set aside due to its outdated elements. Instead, the film took a more modern approach, albeit with significant changes from the source material. One notable detail is the vehicle used for transporting the main characters, which was a modified Chevrolet C-14 light truck, recognizable by its similar design to the American Chevrolet C-10, except for the cab. This model was notable for being one of the last to use the stove bolt engine, a design dating back to 1937, before it was discontinued in 1979. Additionally, the film subtly nods to other space-themed movies through its soundtrack. A scene featuring a hunting horn plays the first three notes of the theme from 2001 A Space Odyssey, echoing another famous space exploration film. 
These elements contribute to the unique blend of homage and innovation that characterizes the film's narrative and setting. The 1979 movie Moonraker received mixed reviews. Critics praised the special effects, but some found the plot too far-fetched. Audiences enjoyed the action and adventure, making it a box office success. It was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. The recognition meant a lot for the team, showing that hard work and creativity in filmmaking were appreciated. The nomination also helped to promote the film and the careers of those involved. In the world of espionage and high-stakes action, certain elements stand out for their uniqueness. Richard Keel made a notable mark by being the only actor to reprise his role as a henchman in consecutive James Bond films. His towering presence was a distinctive feature that added to the thrill and excitement of the spy adventures. The construction of the colossal three-tier space station set a new record for its size, measuring an impressive 108 feet by 47 feet. It required the collective effort of 220 technicians and a full eight weeks to complete, showcasing the dedication and skill involved in bringing such an ambitious project to life. A subtle nod to the source material is present in the film, where a casual mention of a bridge game with Drax by the Minister of Defense serves as a clever reference to the original novel. In the book, Drax is portrayed as a cunning card cheat, known for his consistent victories at the card table in M's favorite club, adding a layer of depth to his character in the cinematic adaptation. This connection to the novel pays homage to the character's origins and enriches the narrative with a touch of literary history. During the filming of Moonraker, the crew faced a unique challenge while shooting the weightless scenes. They had to create the illusion of zero gravity before computer effects were common. To achieve this, they used wires and camera tricks. The actors had to act while suspended, which was not easy and often uncomfortable. Roger Moore, who played James Bond, was known for his humor on set. He kept spirits high with jokes, even when hanging from wires for long periods. The team also built large sets for the space shuttle and space station scenes. These sets were so big that they filled entire sound stages and required innovative techniques to film. The crew worked hard to make these scenes look real, which was tough without today's technology. The dedication of the cast and crew made Moonraker a memorable film with exciting space scenes that were ahead of their time. In a twist that blurs the lines between fiction and reality, a mercenary named John Miller devised a plan straight out of a spy film. He and his crew, under the guise of being part of a film's production team, tried to kidnap Ronnie Biggs, a notorious criminal hiding in Brazil. They offered Biggs a role in the film, hoping to capture him on a yacht and extradite him from international waters. However, their plan fell apart when a journalist tipped off about the plot called Biggs home, foiling the operation. Meanwhile, actress Barbara Bach was nearly brought back to reprise her role from an earlier film. She was to appear in a scene with General Gogol, but this idea was scrapped just before filming started. This film also continued the tradition of taking audiences to picturesque Italian locations, this time showcasing the historic city of Venice as a backdrop for the spy's adventures. This marked the second time in a row that Italy served as a scenic stage for the unfolding action. The 1979 movie Moonraker, part of the James Bond series, is known for taking the spy adventure into space, reflecting the space fascination of that era. It influenced future films by showing that popular characters could venture into science fiction settings. This bold move paved the way for more genre crossovers in cinema. The film's use of special effects and its space setting inspired later movies and TV shows to explore similar themes. Its success also led to more James Bond movies with daring plots and exotic locations, keeping audiences excited for what the next film might bring. In the making of this action-packed film, Sir Roger Moore brought a touch of humor to the set. He gave the gondola he wrote a playful name, Bondola, after it unexpectedly tipped him into the water multiple times during filming. This caused quite a stir among tourists who managed to capture the mishaps on camera. The repeated dunks were challenging for the makeup team, who had to repeatedly dry and redress more. To prevent further unplanned interactions with the public, Moore carried a horn to alert nearby tourists. The film also pushed the boundaries of technology at the time. It employed real lasers to enhance the visual spectacle, adding to the film's cutting edge special effects. Music played a significant role in setting the tone of the film. The soundtrack made its debut on the United States music charts on August 18, 
where it reached its highest position at number 159. Despite its success, the soundtrack has not seen an expanded release with additional tracks, as is common with other films in the series. This is reportedly due to the original recordings being lost in France. If you remember watching Moonraker, the 1979 space adventure that took James Bond to the stars, we would love to hear your stories. How did this movie touch your life? Did it change the way you see movies? Your stories help keep the joy of cinema alive. Please share your thoughts, and if you like what you see, don't forget to hit the like button, share with friends, and subscribe for more discussions on the magic of movies. Your participation makes our community richer. Thank you for sharing and being a part of our journey through film history.